Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here. Before we get started, let's get the shout out out of the way. Today's shout out goes to R4 Reviews. R4 Reviews was the first to say first in one of my recent videos and thus wins a shout out. So what do I got for you today? Today is a second flight of the Seafly Dream. Now I got the white version available today. We're going to fly the white version. This comes in different colors and uh, Seafly wanted you to know that. <laughs> but this is the white version of it. Um, I already went over the plus and minuses of this drone. Uh, the features of this drone, how to control it in my first review. Uh, for those of you uh, looking for that type of information, please see my first review. Okay, my initial review of this drone where I go over how to control it and what the feature or what the drone does and is capable of doing. Uh, but today's view, today's review is I wanted to test its distance. This thing supposedly can go out pretty darn far and provide um, FPV video pretty darn far mainly because the way it's designed. This controller is not only a controller of the drone, but it's also a Wi-Fi FPV relay from your phone. In effect, you connect your drone or your phone to the controller and the controller amplifies the Wi-Fi signal and transmits it out to the, the drone and the, the same going in the reverse direction. Um, and it, it provides improved reception from the drone to your phone. So you wanna connect via the controller if you could. Um, that being said, this uses 5G Wi-Fi. Always make sure that your phone is capable of 5G Wi-Fi, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi in, in particular, before considering purchasing this. Okay? Well, let's go for a flight of this thing and see how far we can get it to go and still get good FPV reception. So, hope you enjoy this flight. So, to start it up, we've got to do a quick press and then a long press of the drone and i want to put it on i'm putting it on the ground instead of my pad there and the reason being you have to give it some room for the uh, gimbal to go through its initiation procedures to uh, determine level surface <laughs> okay okay now we're going to turn on the controller it's connected to the drone then i'm going to make sure i'm connected to the wi-fi of my phone my or actually my phone is connected to the controller and then we'll go from there. So hold on, folks. Okay, I am connected to the controller with my phone, and my con controller automatically connects to the drone. And we're going to hit the start flying portion here. And before we take off, you know, even though you don't really need to do it, and it is under remote control, um, every time, I still like to do it, and that is the compass calibration. So we're going to select uh, compass calibration. I always do this, folks. It's, it's just to make sure to improve the accuracy of your GPS. And to do such, you got to do turns like such, horizontal turns first, until it tells you to do vertical turns with the nose up. And until it tells you calibration is complete. And it says, warning, the general is under, I know that, <laughs> remote controller control, close. But the calibration was a success. So we are good to go. So let's get in the air. Um, hitting record. Now today is a hazy day. We got wildfires burning all over California because of the heat out here. So, you know, don't expect it to be super clear in this video. A lot of that is caused by the haze. And we have some of an, somewhat of an overcast here. But with that in mind, uh, we should be good to go. So let's do automatic takeoff. And check out the stability before we go do anything else. Take it up a little bit higher. Get in the picture. Say, how do you like this shirt today, folks? This, is, this was a gift from one of my cousins when I went back east. But uh, what I'm going to do first, we're going to head toward, the, off in the distance there. I don't know if you can see it or not. And I better go into position hold. <laughs> we are in altitude hold. Now we're in position hold. But off in the distance there, see those trains? We're going to go over there first. So uh, let me check the position hold. Is it holding position now? Because I was in altitude hold before. Now I'm going to turn it, turn the drone toward me. And move its gimbal downward just a little bit. And the reason why, I want to do an up and away. Manual up and away, since this doesn't have up and away capability of the uh, spark. 
Okay, that's far enough. Then we're going to turn it. And I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see it. And we're going to head toward those uh, trains off in the distance. Actually, let's come down a little lower. Now, when we're going out, Bond, I am going to keep the flat portion of these antennas on this controller pointed toward the drone. And the reason I want to do that, folks, and yeah, let me raise up the gimbal a little bit, <laughs> is to get the best signal coming from that drone. Okay, right now we are at uh, 70 meters out, just going out, Bond. And 107 meters out. And I want to go a bit higher so I can keep the drone above the uh, mountains in the distance here. The reason I want to do that is so I can see it better. <laughs> I like to, tr you know, maintain visual on that drone as much as possible. Going up a little bit higher. I'm continuing to climb as I go out, Bond. Again, to keep the drone above the uh, horizon of the mountains. Mountains as horizon. And we're going to plop it right there for a second. And it's going down a bit. And we are 270 meters out. And altitude of 27.5 meters. I want to make sure that it maintains that position for a bit. Okay, 27 meters, going out further. How far away are those trains? 282 meters at. 28 meters up. We're still heading up on, so those trains are pretty darn far away. 334. I'm going to go until the video freezes, in effect. 368, 370 meters out. Okay, the video seems to freeze right there. Let me see if I can get any more video out of this. Well, there we go. I turned it to the right a bit. So let's go diagonally. Okay, what, what am I heading toward? Okay, I see that white salt thing there. It's a pile of salt, it looks like. Pushing forward, 400 meters. I'm pointing my antenna toward that salt pile, so 427 meters, 438, pretty darn good for FPV reception, you know, especially digital Wi-Fi FPV, FPV reception. 470 meters, 485, 492, 500 meters, turning to the right a little bit more. 519 meters. I don't want to go over the trains. I'm going to go uh, along the train line here. 535 meters. 540 meters. Turning to the right each time. 550. We're coming up on 550 meters. So this is pretty dang amazing that I'm getting FPV reception from this drone at this distance. And this is without Wi-Fi reflectors, folks. This is strictly stock. Okay. 553 meters, 554 meters. Doing very well. 556. Still got FPV. This is doing extremely well. Can I make it to 600 meters? Turn to the left a bit. I'm going to get a little bit closer to the trains. Okay, right about there. 561 meters. I'm not seeing it anymore. Seeing movement anymore. Oh, got a little bit of movement there. Okay. Can I turn it toward me again? Okay, it's very iffy right there at 530 meters or so okay i'm gonna do automatic return to home from there automatic return to home activate it and i'm seeing the distance decreasing we're still at 30 meters up about 27 meters up 440 431 and i think it's flying directly back to me so you know we got out there close to 600 meters you know it's advertised at 800 meters but uh my Wi-Fi reception was starting to get iffy there at about uh, 600 meters. 
I probably, maybe if I would have took it up higher, I could have gotten further distance. Uh, with that in mind, if I still got a lot of battery power on this thing. We might just take it down the road and follow down the road and see how much distance I can get that, that way. But I'll go up a bit higher, depending on the battery power. Okay, how far out are we? 165. I can hear it. I can see it now. <laughs> I lost sight of it out there at 600 meters. But I can see it now. Okay, let's turn that off. Oh, actually, let's let it get right overhead again. <laughs> let's see how accurate its return to home is from that distance. Coming down. It's coming down. I'm going to turn off the return to home before it hits the ground. I don't want to take off again, in other words. So that was... That was pretty impressive, 600 meters. Okay, we seem to be about two to three meters off and from the takeoff position. Let's stop it there. Okay, turn the home is off. Um, this time, how much battery power do we got? 60%. We're gonna go out by and again. Well, let me start the video again. I stopped it for a second there. Starting the video, if I can. Turning the drone toward me. Let's bring it back in, close in. I'm trying to get the video started again. I stopped the video. There's, you know, again, the app has some issues on, uh, okay. Especially regarding starting and stopping video. I don't know why, there we go. There we go. Oh, video stopped again. Let me try it again. I heard a bloop, so it should be starting to record. There we go. Going out by it again with 60% battery power. I'm going to go until we get about 40% and I'm going to do a turn to home. So going down the road. Flying FPV down the road. Who needs roads? We are 75 meters out. I'm watching that battery power because again this thing does did not in my first flight did not come straight back to me when the battery it went down to 10 percent it allowed me to go fly it down to 10 percent uh before um it before i landed it i had to manually land it so we're 230 meters out i still got fpv and 254 meters out Still got FPV. So, you know, this is a nice little um, FPV flyer. Consider, okay, how high am I? 35 meters. I'm going up a little bit higher than I did before. Again, the main reason being to pro impro provide improved reception. 398 meters at, 422 meters at. Do I still got control? Okay, I'm looking and my video seems to be frozen, although I got control. So again, I'm trying to turn the yaw and it's not. So we got frozen video. There we go. I got reception back again. Okay, from that distance there, 492 meters, I'm going to do an automatic return to home again. And see if the distance is starting to decrease. And it is 447, 437. So that time I was only getting out a little bit over 400 meters. Um, the first time I got 600 meters. You know, maybe uh, as the battery power wears down on these on this drone, its distance, ability to fly distance uh, might decrease. So you probably want to do this while it's both the battery is fully charged and the controller is fully charged, which I did. The controller is fully charged for this flight. So it's coming back in. We got 40% battery power. I'm not going to take it down to zero again like I did before. That was a mistake. <laughs> but... 206 meters, I see me, I see us down there. Let me lower the gimbal as it comes closer. I see the drone easily. Lowering the gimbal, lowering the gimbal. And there we are. And it turns just before it starts its descent. 
and gimbal's all the way down, but I think it's slightly pointed forward. I'm going to walk. There I am. <laughs> I'm looking at the screen. And watching it descend. So, you know, people are trying to compare this, and they have a right to compare it to the DJI Spark. DJI Spark. And the reason they're comparing it is because it's designed to look like the Spark. Let me turn off that descent there. But I, I think that's a kind of an unfair comparison because this thing's about $150 cheaper than the Spark, especially with the controller. So, you know, you're not going to get the same features as the Spark. You know, you're going to get a drone that's uh, not as capable as the Spark, but still it's $150 cheaper. Now, a lot of people will poo-poo poo -poo that and say $150, that's nothing. $150 is a lot of money to some people, folks. So, you know, this still does have a niche uh, for, you know, customers, in effect. So, okay, my voltage is down to about 40%. Uh, I don't know what, let's finish it off with a circle me. <laughs> Going back up. Let's push it right over my head here. Make sure I do the circle me correctly. And... Activating circle me mode and that thing it'll start to rotate and you want to increase the radius by pulling out bond on the stick and lowering the gimbal so you show up in the picture and then telling it there it goes. So it's gonna circle that position it, that it was before you pull back on the stick. Now I'm noticing a lot of blue on my screen here. And that's one of the things this drone seems to have an issue with is uh, white balance. Um, it's very blue, very cool uh, screen. So the, the white balance is somewhat off on this. I'm coming down a bit. And we're going to stop the rotation right about there. We're going to call it quits. I just wanted to play with the rotation. Oh. Ah, it's coming home. Low battery power. It's landing itself. Because we're down to 10%. Well, there you go, folks. Landing itself. Didn't do a return home, but it landed itself on low battery. This one did at least. <laughs> okay, let me stop the video before we proceed further. Okay, that was the second flight of the Seafly Dream. Um, overall, you know, it's, it performed very well. I went, got pretty dang good, uh, FPV distance out of it, over 600 meters there. Um, but, you know, you know, it does have limitations, and I, for the people that want to compare this to the Spark, you know, remember, this is $150 cheaper than the Spark, so. Hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101, again, with the Seafly Dream. Take your dream to travel around the world, <laughs> as Seafly wanted me to say. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.